Next question is, what is SAP best practices? You might have heard about this term in quite a number of places or in quite a number of interviews, but what really is best practices? I would like to give you a very simple example of a best practice. Think of best practice like a template or even like a recipe. So if you want to make a bowl of the chicken soup, so this is your chicken soup, and in order to make it, you need chicken stock, and then you need maybe some noodles, and then a ton of ingredients like onions or carrots or whatever that are specific to the kind of chicken soup that you're making. Now let's say in order to make this chicken stock you you need one hour and to boil the noodles you need 10 minutes and then all of this stuff requires like 30 minutes so in total you require say two hours to make your chicken soup what if you could cut down on this because it's really a stock item so if there's a way through which you can just take the chicken stock out of the cupboard then start using it directly you will save on one hour so what you have there is a ready made template and if you follow that recipe you get chicken stock and then on top of that you do your customization and you get the chicken soup that you want right so best practice is also very similar to that say you're doing this sap implementation and where do you start you start with your basic out of the box sap out of the box sap instance and then you gather your requirements from the different users so requirements and then you put it in an fs function specification and then you make your technical detail technical specifications and when you bake them into your system you get your customized solution customized solution very much like making your chicken soup a customized chicken soup so this is the traditional standard approach what's the problem with this like we discussed with the chicken soup it's time consuming now there are situations where you would have to make things from scratch because of the complexity involved or the amount of tolerance that that client gives you because sometimes some requirements have to be met the way they are there is no going around it in such cases you can't really use a template so you have to build everything from scratch but in most cases where there's a standard template of doing things in a particular way why not rather use that template rather than doing everything from scratch which is time consuming the second point that's a problem with this traditional approach is standardization what is standardization if an intercompany transaction needs to be done it can be done in a variety of ways i'm talking about the details but for the most part the bulk of the companies do intercompany transactions in a particular way and that's all there is to it if you have a template a standardized way of doing things why not implement it in most of the situations where you don't really need to tweak the system too much that's what I call by standardization so if there is a standardized template that solves your problem use it instead of going around and fiddling with the details and then making a customized solution that's not really standard and then trying to implement it for the you trying to push it onto the users or the users pushing back on you it's better that we go with a standardized solution because it worked elsewhere 
and in all probability it will work here. Like I said, sometimes it doesn't and when it doesn't, yeah, go with your custom solution. So to go around this problem, let's see what we can do. Okay, now we have our requirements and we have best practices. Now, do these match? If yes, then just implement best practices, the standardized template, and then you're done. You don't need to do these FSS and TSS and whatnot. If it's not a match, then you can do two things. One is write an FS that that details the requirement around that business scenario. Try and see if the best practices kind of match, you know, like, like a 60% match or a 70% match. If yes, then implement your best practices and, and then later modify to suit your requirements. If they don't match at all, which is like a no-no, yeah, write your own spec. Don't bother implementing best practices. Just do your own implementation of technical specs and then the coding, blah, 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 and the configuration, and you have the final solution. Let me give you an example of this. Like I was discussing, the intercompany scenario. So an intercompany scenario comprises of say let me give you some examples of scenarios for example intercompany customization there's a standard best practices template for intercompany customization for example how to implement intercompany stock transfer how to implement intercompany sales how to implement intra-company sales or how to implement intra-company stock transfer like for example, an intercompany scenario consists of, you know, setting up intercompany billing, setting up, uh, you know, the enterprise structure assignments, uh, setting up uh, intercompany pricing conditions. So it involves a couple of steps, you know, four or five of them, and the standard SAP best practices already gives you all that in a package so you can just use it or you can just build all of this from scratch if you just use it it'll save you like two weeks of time if you just do everything from scratch so you'll just end up spending you know two weeks or even four weeks of it trying to do it your own way so there's no right or wrong approach it's just trying to see if your requirements match the best practices and if it does use it if not, go your own way.